what has been the um, uh, the positive uh, rate of detection amongst this population that you have um, screened? How many percentage actually have come out with precancerous lesions or who need treatment? Okay, so there are a few things we need to clarify. So if we you have a positive detection, uh, what you call a positive screening test that does not translate to a precancer. So in the Malaysian setting, if we screen 100 women, we will find that six will have HPV, high risk HPV detected in the swab. So six in 100, but that does not mean six in 100 have cancer. So that's quite important in our communication. And that's an overall number. And we have areas where it's 12 in 100 and areas where it's 2 in 100. So depending on the population. So Malaysia is fortunate in the sense that it's not that high. And therefore, we are able to, um, we have the workforce, we have the facility to manage and to treat these, um, to, to review these six patients or six women to then offer them whatever treatment is necessary. So I, I would say in our 25,000 screens, we've only detected about four to five advanced cancers where they've been led to care and they are survivors now. Um, but we've managed to detect six to 700, uh, if not more, pre-cancer changes that we've treated successfully. I think to say that everyone smiles and they are happy doing this, it will be a lie. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 as, a, as a Malaysian or Malaysian population, we don't even use tampons. You know, we, we're not comfortable with our own uh, female anatomy. We don't understand that anatomy. And so to insert an instrument yourself will require a significant amount of uh, education, uh, pictorially, verbally, um, even through media, to teach them about their own anatomy and how to take a swab without hurting themselves. Of course, compared to a pap smear, this is way more acceptable. We have asked women, uh, how do you feel about this? 99%, I don't know what happened to that one woman, but 99% of them will say, I will have a swab anytime compared to a speculum examination. So even in a conservative community, when we go to uh, the kampongs, where um, they don't usually access healthcare, a swap is very acceptable and they can do it if you, are, you spend some time teaching them how to do it. Are there barriers to that? Cultural yes. barriers? Um, yes. I, 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 it, it's with everything in healthcare, um, our health-seeking behaviours are very different in the urban and in the rural setting. Uh, many rural individuals wouldn't have had seen any doctors in their lifetime. Even the babies are had at home, right? So the, to convince them when they are well, to say, have this test done, where they, are, they have um, doubts of, that will prevent you from getting sick. That is a major barrier, major, major barrier to change health-seeking behaviour. To say that we can do something that will, will not incur cost to you in our, in our programme. And the, of course, I say this because many people fear having a test done because when they have the test done, the unknown of going to the hospital, the financial implications are great and that's out of their control. So to be able to control that narrative, to tell them what the end point is, to communicate that correctly is extremely important, it's critical. We need a, an army of healthcare professionals who can actually convey this narrative. We can, we can and we must, we must do that. We, even if it's not a perfect message, initially we have to get started <coughs> compared to not having anything done at all. One of the things is, is the unknown and we, we talk about stigma and fear. We have had data to show that um, when someone has an abnormal screening test, 
87% of them already think they have cancer. They think they have cancer. Imagine that, that fear, the anxiety. And they stop having any relationship with their husbands until they are seen. But what our data shows is that as soon as they've seen a healthcare professional, the stress level and everything goes down to nothing and the sense of well-being goes up to 90%. They then say that, I feel good that I've done something about that. So we have data to show that. So what this tells us is that we really have a lot of work to do. We need to communicate that information and deal with the anxiety and unknown more effectively. So the vaccines, the swaps, that's all sorted out. I think it's how to reach and how to deliver that message. And I, I want to say that in my career, self-collection has been the biggest breakthrough in cervical cancer prevention. And whilst it's not perfect and it doesn't overcome all of the barriers, it overcomes so many and makes such a big difference that we've got to screen the people who need it, who are willing to be screened. We've got to keep working on what Yinling's talking about, about some of the other barriers. But you know, some of the barriers are cultural and are overcome through bodily autonomy, through the patient being able to take the sample themselves rather than have another person in that part of, of, of their anatomy. So I think, I think one of the things we do is we always want to improve what we're doing and we focus on what's not working. And it's important that we do that because that's how things will get better. But we were talking about this this morning. We've really got to put this in the context of how big a breakthrough this is. Breakthroughs aren't perfect, but this has made, this has moved the dial in a way I have never seen in over 20 years of working in cervical screening. And definitely, I think, is going to be critical in achieving the coverage and acceptability that we need in Malaysia, but also globally. And, and as an oncologist, we've never been able to say that we can eliminate a cancer. We make big hoo-hahs, we have big media um, publicity. When we find a medication that can improve, say, the survival by 20% at great cost, at a lot of expenses, we say, let's make this drug available to everybody, but maybe more than a million or two million ringgit that doesn't actually in translate to increased survival. But here we have a simple intervention. It's not sexy, but it's an intervention that if you do it at early enough, we eliminate a cancer. That's a very powerful message that we need to get across. I've always spoken about the, using the words treatment and cure in cancer very carefully. Um, in most cancers, you can't say, I'm going to cure your cancer. That's my personal opinion. Anyway, I don't know whether you agree with me, but the more appropriate word is treat. Um, perhaps with cervical cancer, you can actually say, I can cure you. Um, would you say, would you agree with me? I would agree. Uh, you won't even need to reach the point of having I've got cancer. You won't need a point of saying I've got a pre-cancer because I can, if we do this right, we can prevent that from happening. We can remove it. We can deal with it. We can cure. And I think one thing that sometimes people don't understand is that with pre-invasive disease and very, very early invasive disease, you're cured with a gynecologic procedure and not the treatments people associate with cancer are not needed, the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy. So we are talking about something that is much more manageable. We have 30% of them who will say, yes, coming in, do I have an appointment next week? And there's another 30% on the other spectrum where we really invest everything. We make phone calls, we, you know, more than 10 phone calls, we WhatsApp them, we have phone conversations with them, and they're still fearful. And, and I think we need to respect that from whatever perspective they come from, and it may need a little bit more work. But yes, we, we don't have everyone who agrees to having a treatment done, and that's perhaps the education that we're still lacking in. You know, I, 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 I have a story of so, um, someone who lives in a village, and in that village, anyone who goes to a hospital never comes back 
alive. And that is very scary for them. So to, to sort of offer you a screening test where there's a possibility of going to a hospital, it's an extremely scary thing for a woman. Mm-hmm.